Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Tesla Model X and the Tesla Model Y. Now normally, I wouldn't really say that these two compete with each other, but with the recent price decreases on both of these rigs, especially on the Model X, what I would say today, is this Model X worth, let's say, $30,000 more than the Model Y? Well, we're going to explore that today. I'm going to give you my thoughts. At the end of the day, $30,000 is a lot of money, but what do you get for that, and is it worth spending the extra money? So let's get into it. All right, everyone. So before we get into the video comparing the Model X and the Model Y, I just want to remind everyone that next weekend, uh, this coming Saturday, October 21st, we're going to be holding, I'm going to be holding an event up at the, uh, at a brewery in upstate Connecticut. I can tell you that out of spec mom will be there, Kathy, Bailey will be there, and maybe someone else as well. We'll have to see. Hey everyone, it's Dave. Just a quick update. October 21st, it's a Saturday. We're going to do an EV meetup at a brewery in upstate Connecticut. It's called the Norbrook Farm Brewery, and it's at 204 Stillman Hill Road in Colebrook, Connecticut. At 12 noon, we'll see you there. Now, for anyone that wants to meet up down here in Stamford, Connecticut at the Ridgeway Plaza, there's, um, there's an EA there, there's some Tesla superchargers, they're Urbans or what have you, but at 9 a.m., we can meet up there in, in uh, Stamford, Connecticut. It's about an 85-mile drive up to the brewery. There's different ways you can go. We're not all gonna follow each other. It's not anything that's gonna be official. But uh, we sh let's have some fun. Let's all get together. If you're from Albany and you guys know who I'm talking about, F-150 Lightning Club, come on over to the over to the brew pub. If you're part of the EV Club of Connecticut, come on up to the brew pub. So if you're interested, send me an email to dave at studios.com and let me know if you're planning on attending. All right, so let's take a tour of the Tesla Model Y. This is a 2023 model, and this is my wife Kathy's car. This is the long range model with 19 inch wheels. It's white on white. And just to kind of go over the recent pricing of these cars, um, the, the, the base model Y is no longer the 4680 pack all wheel drive. It's now a rear wheel drive that starts at 43,990. And it has 260 miles of range with the 19 inch wheels. It does zero to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds, and it has a top speed of 135 miles an hour. Now, if you step up to the long range, which is what this vehicle is, it starts at 48,490. It has a range of 330 miles with these 19 inch wheels. Top speed, similar, 135 miles per hour, but it drops the, the speed down to 4.8 seconds, zero to 60, which is which is great, it's, it's pretty, pretty fast. There is a seven seat version of the long range Model Y available for an additional $2,500, but the honest truth is the seven seat version is really five adults, um, maybe not Dave size, but five adults plus two kids. Whereas when we get into the, uh, the Model X, that really, there is a seven seat version of that car where you really can fit seven adults in that. Now, if you want to get fancy, the performance version of the Model Y is 52,490. Now, what that will do is that'll give you 21 inch wheels. It gives you a carbon fiber, carbon fiber spoiler, lowered suspension, aluminum alloy pedals, um, and, but it only comes in a five seater. That's 52,490, 303 miles of range because it comes with 21 inch wheels. And um, top speed jumps up by 20 miles an hour to 155 miles an hour, but it really starts to jump the speed up zero to 60 to three and a half seconds. So that spicy version of 52,490 is, is pretty amazing. Now, recently Tesla just announced on both the Model 3s and the Model Ys, a whole bunch of new paint colors, but they're not doing it in a conventional manner. What they're doing is they're offering these new paint colors in the form of clear, um, either a clear paint protection film, or they're offering 
uh, color paint protection film. Now anywhere from $7,500 to $8,500, there's seven different colors. And then for $5,000, they're offering clear paint protection film, which on an initial glance may sound like a lot of money, but they're doing the door jams and I guess they're putting it under a warranty of some sort. So look, I, I personally, I don't keep cars long enough to do that, but if you really wanna you know, buy, buy a car and get the same, get the right color that you want, there's kind of a, a neat idea for you to do. So that's a, that's a brand new way of Tesla offering differentiation. Now again, that's only on the Model 3 and the Model Y. One other option of note is you can get a spoiler for the back right over there, um, which is about, it's, it's actually $800 from, from Tesla itself. So that's, that's what we've got going on here with the Tesla Model Y. Now it's important to note that the Model Y, no matter which flavor it is that you get, it, it does qualify for a $7,500 federal tax credit. And here, and, and, and in the state of Connecticut, any car under $50,000, will also qualify for an additional state rebate of $2,250. So even the long range Model Y will qualify for the cheaper rebate now. That's as long as you don't get the white seats and you, and you uh, get the midnight silver metallic paint. The base color paint now on the Model Y is, is um, midnight silver, it used to be white. So if you were to get this car exactly as you see it right here, um, without destination and the 250 delivery charge, it would be 48,490 plus $2,000. So it would be just over 50,000 because of the white paint and the white seats. So it would not qualify for the cheaper rebate. So be careful if you're out there shopping. Look at your state incentives. Um, any SUV that is under uh, from Tesla that's, that has a list price under $80,000 will qualify, assuming you do, for the federal tax credit. So both this, the performance model and the long range and even, of course, the rear wheel drive Model Y will qualify for the federal tax credit. Um, lots of things are changing with that for 2024, so keep your eye on that. We've had some other videos up on the guide channel about that. All right, so let's get into the Model X. This is... This is the big boy. This came out in 2016. Years ago, I used to have a Model X, and uh, but the problem was I had the 60D, which had a very small, it had a software limited, it was a 75D with a software limit, uh, limited pack. It was, I saved $9,000 to get it, and uh, it, was, it was a great car, loved it. However, the range was horrendous. Now, this is a really interesting situation with this Model X, and one of the reasons why we're doing this comparison today is that back in um, August of 2022, this Model X, as it's sitting here today, um, now this one in particular has, this is a seven seat con configuration, and it has the 22 inch wheels. But back in August 2022, the base Model X was 122,190 um, dollars, and today the base model X is 79,990. Now you'll notice that's ten dollars under eighty thousand dollars, which means that if you get a base model X with the 20-inch wheels, and by the way, you can get any color you want, including this beautiful new. Um, ultra red color, which is the one that I'm going to be getting, which was a $3,000 option about three months ago, then you, and if you do qualify for a federal tax credit, that, that vehicle now you could buy for $79,990 less $7,500. So basically $72,500 for a car that earlier this year, in January of this year, was $122,000. So you know, hence that brings me to why we're doing this comparison today. Because if you look at the gap between, let's just say you take the high trim level of the Model Y, that being the performance, which is 52,490, and you compare that to the base model of the Model X, which is 79,990, then you're talking only $27,500 in difference. 
in price. Now, I say only 27,500 between the performance model, the high-end trim of the Model Y, and the base trim of the Model X. But here's the thing. Don't kid yourself when you think this Model X. I mean, this Model X weighs um, 5,200 pounds, which is, you know, quite a heavy car. Actually, I think it's 5,185 versus the Model Y, which is about 4,360 pounds. But this Model X, even in the base trim, actually goes 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, whereas the, the spicy version of the Model Y that does zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. So you're not really gonna feel any difference in terms of performance. One thing to keep in mind about the Model X is that if uh, zero to 60 in 3.8 in 3 seconds is not enough, you can get the plaid version of this car for an extra $10,000, bringing the price up to 89,990, and that thing will do zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds, which is just insane. Like, I don't need that. Um, I really don't, um, and, and it's plenty fast in the base trim. Now, the thing about this Model X is for an additional, let's say the difference again between the spicy version of the Y and the base model of the X, is it worth $27,500? Now, for me, um, I'm doing it, and I'm doing it because, look, I'm a big guy, I like a little bit more of a premium vehicle. Some of the differences between the, the Model Y and the Model X, in addition to the size, um, you know, you, you've, got a, you've got these crazy falcon wing doors on this Model X, which either you love them or you hate them. Um, you know, with the kids uh, out of the house now, it's not like I'm opening the rear doors all that often. Uh, quite honestly, I kind of like them. I think they're pretty cool. I think they've worked out the the refinements and the kinks out of those doors. And uh, I think they're pretty cool. But you do get a ride that is unmatched when you, a much better ride, in my opinion, than the Model Y. Now, don't get me wrong, the Model Y is really the gold standard car today. It's an amazing vehicle and an amazing value. And, uh, but this Model X has an air suspension. And the air suspension will actually give you, um, a height anywhere between 66.1 and 68.5 inches tall versus a height on this Model Y of 64 inches. So you've got about 2.4 inches of travel that you could raise or lower the suspension on this uh, Model X, which is, which is great, quite great. Um, again, you can get the Model X in different seating configurations uh, five, six, or seven. And keep in mind, the seven seat configuration in this Model X will hold seven um, adults, uh, as opposed to the seven seat version of the Model Y right here, which will hold five adults and two kids, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the ground clearance on this Model X is 8.1 inches versus 6.8 inches. And the width is 78.7 .7 inches on the Model X versus 75.6. So it's uh, about three inches wider, and this uh, Model X is about a foot longer. It's um, 199.1 inches long versus uh, 187 inches long in the model in the Model uh, in the Model Y. All right, so for anywhere between 27,500 and let's call it 32,000, 31,500 dollars extra money for the X versus, depending on which version of the Model Y you get. I'm really not, not comparing it so much to the, to the Model um, Y rear wheel drive, because that's, that's really the, the least expensive. By the way, that Model Y rear wheel drive, great value. Comes with the LFP battery pack, and I mean, that is a, an incredibly good value. I think a good comparison there would be to do, you know, is it worth getting the Model Y over the Model 3 rear-wheel drive? I would argue yes. That's a, that's a different video for a different day. But here's the thing about this Model X. Um, for an additional, let's call it $30,000, to me, you're getting a vehicle that, forget about the paper, forget about the statistics, you're getting a vehicle in a completely different class. 
Now, granted, this vehicle's been around since 2016. It's been on the drawing board since 2012 when the Model S came out. It's, it's in a lot of ways, older technology um, when you compare it to the Model Y or even the Model 3, especially the new Model 3 Highland or the refresh that's got all the latest greatest in there. But the thing about this Model X is it does have, it, they went through a refresh on the Model X in uh, 2022, similar to what they did with the Palladium version of the Model S in 2021. And there's just a lot more refinement in the, in the, uh, in the vehicle. Um, many different things that I'll take you through here in a minute. But the biggest thing that is, is key to understand is this vehicle is just pure class. It's, it's the size of it, it's the, it's the stature of it, it's the way it rides. It's, um, it's just, it's really the Mac Daddy. And, you know, when you think about all the differences uh, between these two cars here, you have to take your, your, uh, look at yourself and say, what's the right vehicle for you? And if you want a little bit more substance, a little bit more class, a little bit more maybe elegance and top of the line, the X is the way to go. And especially with these ridiculous price decreases and the fact that the base model is now eligible for that $7,500 federal tax credit, it's really hard not to do a comparison between should I step up from the Y to the X. Now, the thing about it is this, this X, and I've been driving it over the last day, is, is big. Um, it, it doesn't really look that much bigger than the Y. Um, in some, at some angles it does. Now keep in mind, it's a, like I mentioned, it's a foot longer, but when you're inside of it, it's just got this expansive dashboard all the way up to where the glass meets the, the hood line. And you just feel so much, it's like a much larger cabin. And, and the glass roof that this X has is just insane. Um, the execution of this glass roof that goes from the hood all the way up behind your head, in my opinion, is much better than the Lucid that I just had. Lucid in the Grand Touring and also the Touring with the glass option, you, you have a great glass roof in that vehicle, but there's just something about how close your head, or at least in my case, is to that glass roof. And then also the execution of the sun visors in this vehicle is just done perfectly. Um, some of the other things that that um, you get in this Model X is you get a rear screen where if you got kids in the back, they can watch Netflix movies or YouTube videos or what have you. Um, you've got greater range with the X, uh, especially when you compare it to the spicy version of the Model Y. The performance model version, um, it actually gets 303 miles of range, whereas if you get the base version of this Model X, it's 348 miles of EPA rated range. Um, again, I mentioned the Falcon wing doors, and the other thing is you get a 17 inch screen that um, compared to the 15 inch screen in the Model, in the model uh, Y, but because they also give you a screen right in front of your um, the steering wheel, which by the way, you can get a yoke still, it's a thousand dollars extra. I would never do that. Um, this car comes base standard with the, with a round wheel now, which is in my opinion, much better and much safer. Um, but they put a lot of information on the screen right in front of the steering wheel, which I think is excellent because it gives you so much more real estate for the maps to be shown on the screen. So I think that that is, that's really a good thing. Um, you know, the, the, the pros about the Y is it's just kind of like the perfect car. And by the way, we're keeping this Y. We're not selling this Y. I mean, a lot of you know I've got a contract, uh, but the reason why we're keeping it is not because of the contract. It's just a great car. So in our case, we're extremely lucky and fortunate to be able to have both of the SUV versions of this vehicle. But um, one of the other things that I noticed yesterday when I was when I was uh, out on Long Island with this Model X was when we charged it, the charging curve is, is quite a bit better than on the Model Y. So they'll both, at least the long range and the performance, will both charge at a peak rate of 250 kilowatts. But this Model X held that peak rate longer 
than the Model Y does, number one. And number two, when I got to a 50% state of charge, I was pulling more energy. Let me show you right now what yesterday's event looked like. All right, so here I am on Long Island somewhere. I've got a Model X today plugged in at a 31% state of charge and popped right up to 258 kilowatts. And at 50% state of charge was pulling 140 kilowatts. Compare that to the Model Y on a V3, which I normally pull 105 kilowatts. So this Model X is actually a much better charging beast than the Model Y in terms of the curve. Another really nice feature of, of this, uh, the newer uh, refreshes with the 17 inch display. I mean, you can see how vast, how large the, the screen really is. When you put the car into drive, you just push it like that, uh, put it in the park, you just push park. Uh, this is kind of the way the new Model 3 refresh will be, and also the, the way that the new Model Y will most likely be next year. There still is no, um, no, no indicators in the mirrors on the X as far as whether or not there's a car in your blind spot, but you do have this indicator when you put on your turn signal, which I, I was just reaching for the stock here, but this is the way you put your turn signals on, and you'll see you get the, the little graphic up there. Um, or, or if you, you change your turn signal. Um, the headlights, as far as high beams, are right there. There are auto high beams on this vehicle if you choose to use them. The horn is not here, which I think is not good. The horn is here. Um, do not like that. Uh, I hope someone comes out with a stock. You, you can um, put on your, your windshield wipers right here, and then over in the center display, you can kind of cycle through which, how fast you want them to go. So there's there's a number of different features, and then of course you have voice control over here, and then the two the two uh, wheels. But there there is a nice feature where if you go over here to display, um, and you're able to you're able to tilt the the monitor towards you. So I don't know if you can see this from an angle standpoint, but I'll, I'll show you right from here. If you, if you go to display and you put it over, it'll change, there it goes flat, and then it'll go all the way to perhaps the passenger side. So if you're, if you're watching Netflix movies or if you're charging, supercharging or what have you, you can actually put it towards you. If I were driving the car alone, I would put the, I'd put the display facing me, um, sort of like angling it just turning it toward me a little bit, which is which is a real nice touch. Uh, I really like that. And again, having this additional screen in in the front is is incredible. And I'll just sort of add once again that the the um, if you know power seats obviously, but this windshield is just incredible. It really is something to behold. And the way with which Tesla, and I believe they have a patent on this, there's a magnet up here that you can actually take um, and, and push these, these um, sun visors right over. And they're not huge, but you're able to fold this down a little bit and then you can fold them up and uh and use them and you can move it sort of if the sun is up in this area you know over here you can pull, kind of move it wherever you want it's a, it's an ingenious design and mostly it's an ingenious design because of w what you can do is you can take it away and pop it over there and then it doesn't block this incredible just fantastic roof um going back to the to the to the rear you'll also see that for the rear passengers there's a a little tucked in sunroof um for the rear passengers in the rear seats which is also uh, a nice touch one other little small anecdote i'm six foot five and these falcon wing doors you know they've got sort of a, a tough edge on them up here you don't want to hit your head on it but i'm six foot five and i can walk right under this thing i mean no issue I'm standing up straight and tall. Now, be careful if you're on an incline. Don't always assume that you can. So I don't have an issue with that, which is which is great. The one thing is, though, with the the rear hatch being six foot five, uh, I smack right into it. So you have to be a little bit careful. The other thing is that if you do have children and a car seat 
and you're putting the car seat in the back here, there are latches for the, uh, the for the second row. I don't believe there are latches for the third row. I may be wrong, but I don't believe there are. Uh, but the other thing is that you can actually kind of hide under here if it's raining out and you're attending to your kids and you stay dry, run underneath this big canopy that comes over. So there's a little bit of function there with these crazy, uh, with these crazy uh, doors. So let me just demonstrate here. When you, when you open the door, you hit this uh, the little button right there to unlock the door. But when it opens and you want to push it open, there's resistance right there. And then it kind of opens all the way. So it, it's a minor thing. I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But uh, anyway, I do like the fact that you can just click that button and it shuts the door for you. It does have soft closing doors as well, which is uh, a real nice, luxurious touch. One of the things I've been super curious about is, am I going to fit in the third row? I'm six foot five and uh, not super thin. Let's see what happens here. All right. I'm getting in. Legs in. I sit down. That's fine. I got in fine. Um, but I can tell you my headroom back in here. Oh, man. They say it's for adults. I don't know, man. Oh, no. Uh, but you do have a nice vent here. All right. So here I am sitting in the second row. Now, one of the things I heard is the Model Y, it actually has more leg room. Than, than the Model X in the second row, assuming you got a seven-seater. Um, I can't speak for the six-seater. The six-seater definitely gives you a nice sort of a, you know, it doesn't have this middle seat in the middle, so you can get from the second row to the third row a lot easier than what I just had to do. But uh, my legs are definitely jammed up against this. Now, I'm going to hit this button over here, which is going to close these Falcon Wing doors. It's kind of freaky. Ooh. All right, I'm in. And uh, yeah, no, I'm in, I'm in here okay. And one nice thing is that these seats in the rear, they do recline quite a, quite a bit. And so I think that's, that's pretty nice. So I would say I fit in the rear of the second row of this Model X. But, and I've got the seat in front of me where I would keep it to drive. Um, this is not an Escalade or a Suburban. It's a little tighter, to be honest. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say is I don't really love the six-seat configuration, which is a $6,500 option. The $3,500 seven-seat option, I guess, is a nice option because it still lets you fold the seats down flat, whereas in the six-seater option, the second row, they're buckets, and they don't fold flat, which I don't really like. I actually had that in my 60D which was a bit crazy. And the other thing, just anecdotally I hear, is that um, a lot of times, because there's so much room in the second row when you have the six-seater, the kids, they, they start jumping around between the two seats. A couple of buddies of mine had them, and they're like, it drove them crazy. And uh, I know that's a small thing. You just tell your kids to sit down, control your kids. But, you know, there is a lot of room to be able to walk around in the back and, and check it out. But for me, you know what? I'm just getting the five seater. Uh, that's um, that's no extra money. The seven seater is a thirty five hundred dollar option in the Model X. Definitely a good option to have if you have a need to put a couple of kids. Uh, if you're doing carpool or what have you, all the way in the in the third row. But don't kid yourself. I'm <laughs> out of spec. Dave, he's not fitting in the back seat in the third row very well at all. What I would say is the difference between these two vehicles today versus um, just earlier this year, you wouldn't really cross shop these vehicles. But today, what I would say is you should. Um, and, and I think that they're definitely worth checking out both these vehicles. You cannot go wrong in any way, shape or form with the Model Y. What a fantastic car. Um, it's kind of like the perfect package and, and it's a great commuter, and it's also a great road tripper, great range, at least this version here, the long range, and, um, you know, very, very comfortable. The seats are quite cushy. Uh, speaking of the seats, you do get not only heated seats, uh, well, both these cars come with heated seats, but you also get cooled seats in the Model X. One would hope that we could have had uh, massaging seats in there uh, in the Model X. Um, you also do get, I believe, XM uh, radio built right into 
the Model X's and the Model S's, whereas you have to do a little bit of an add-on integration for XM in your Model S or Model 3 uh, or the Model Y. M little minor things, but, um, you know, look, a lot more storage capability in this Model X as well, 9,200, 9, 92 cubic feet versus about 71, maybe, I think it is, cubic feet in the Model Y. So if you have the need for more space, the Model X is bigger. But let's, let's, let's sum up this video by saying, if you're in the market for a Tesla and you're in the market for an SUV, or even if you're in the market for any SUV, I would look at both these vehicles. It really, you just can't make a mistake. In our case, we're gonna keep both. We're gonna have both in our family. Um, the, the X will be my daily driver. The X will be our road tripper car for sure. And with the greater range and the greater curving uh, speed. But, um, you know, listen, it's personal preference. And uh, I would not sign off this Model X as old technology. With the refresh they did recently, and with the ride and the air suspension and the stature and the class, I mean, I think you got to check out both these vehicles. So anyway, best of luck to you in choosing what is right for you. And uh, I don't think you can make a mistake here, folks. Thanks again for watching another episode of Spec Dave, and we'll catch you on the next one. I got to get this Model X back up to Tesla. It's time to drop it off. One thing to also keep in mind is that while every door on this car is power, so for example, if you get out of the car, and you hit this little button, the front doors will actually close. And then if you want to close the Falcon wing door, you hit this little button up there and the Falcon wing door will close. Same with the, uh, the rear hatch, hit this little button and the rear hatch will close automatically. Um, we'll do this one over here and, and we'll do this one over here. So they go to all this trouble to make all these doors close, but the front, it's still manual. I mean, I mean, that's a little bit of a miss to me. So you gotta close it and then you gotta push it down and then there it latches. Um, the other minor thing with these uh, front doors is that Tesla has cheapened out over the years and they no longer have sensors in the front two doors. The rear, the rear uh, Falcon doors still have sensors and they'll open up Pretty cool, watch this, if I stand really close to it. See the angle that it goes up at right there, and I was standing real close to the door, um, it, it articulates. And what's interesting here is that you'll notice that right now, uh, I'll hit my head on that. So it didn't go all the way because it was standing there. The fact is that these Falcon wing doors still have the ultrasonic sensors built into them, but the front doors, both the driver's door and the rear and the, the passenger door do not. So when you open the door, you'll notice that it only opens just a little bit. And there's a bit of resistance if you try and open the door right away. You have to wait a second or two, and then you can open the door and glide it in. The nice thing though, is that when you get in the vehicle, you actually, all you have to do is touch the brake and watch this. I'm gonna to touch the brake and watch what the door does. Now that is the ultimate in being lazy. So uh, I really like that feature a lot. All right, so as I'm driving this car back up to Mount Kisco, I thought I would provide just a little bit of context. Some of my thoughts around how this car drives. The first thing is the, the windshield is just so expansive. It goes so much further out than the uh, than the Model Y. The Model Y is not as wide. It feels a lot smaller. This feels like you're in first class. It really does feel like you're in first class, not coach. And um, you know, and and because of the air suspension, the ride is is quite good. Now, my understanding is that this vehicle has some sort of sound active noise canceling, and I don't really hear much noise, at least on these little country roads as we're buzzing through, um, even on the highway. Now, yesterday, in all fairness, it was raining all day. So I'm excited to get this, this um, Model X out on the highway today where it's not raining because the, the water rushing up under the, 
the you know under the wheel wells and all that adds a lot of noise it wasn't bad um i know a lot of people claim that the model y um and the, and the model threes are loud or ride rough um you know i'm i get that this definitely is much more refined much more substance i think it's got double pane glass all the way around just like i believe the the new model three refresh has double plane gas double plane gas <laughs> double paned glass in the front side uh windows as well as now in the rear but there there's just a lot more it's seemingly more substance to this vehicle that that gives it a lot more insulation the ride is is very pleasurable here we are in a beautiful fall day in in connecticut the leaves are changing colors and um, it's just it's just amazing to have this this glass roof i mean it's truly an extraordinary experience um, it creates a whole cabin ambiance uh, uh, that is just if you're in a bad mood just go for go for a ride in your x and um, it's quite amazing people people will say that it lets it lets a lot of heat in because of all the glass and you know that while that may be true you can you can definitely um, you, you know, uh, you can tint the windows if you want. You can ceramic, uh, put some ceramic, I guess not, not I, don't know, I guess you can coat the windows, but there are films that you can uh, put on your, on your vehicle to reduce the heat. And they also have, uh, they have these little inserts that you can buy, whether it's from Tesla or aftermarket. Uh, a little bit getting back used to not having the stocks in this car which is, is a little bit odd and a little bit strange, maybe for the average person who's never driven one. Um, for me, because I had the 2021 Model S, the refresh with the turn signals here on the on the steering wheel, and you know, the, the horn should be right here in the center and it's not, and, and that bothers me. They got that right with the Model 3 refresh. Um, they didn't get that right with the Model S's and the Model X's. So the horn is is like this tiny little button over here that in a panic situation, I don't know what I'm going to be hitting. I'll probably hit the windshield wipers or something like that. But the information display, the way everything is just um, is, is presented to you is is quite phenomenal. Uh, visibility out the back, I would say, is a little bit better than the Y. Not that the Y is bad, but it's a small window in, in the back. Now, as we're getting onto the Merit here, we're going to start to... I want to give you a little feedback in terms of the way that it um, that it uh, that it rides. Now, let me just get the setup right here because every time I go in the car, it, it changes. I've got comfort suspension, and let me get on here. Oh, there's a there's an X coming up right next to me here. All right, we're in good company. It's a blue one. He's got his radar detector from New York. Beautiful. Looks good. You know, it doesn't look that big when it's on the road. It doesn't. But it feels a lot bigger when you're on the inside, especially for me. I'm a big guy. Um, it gives you that little extra, that little extra size, that little extra push, that little extra class. 30 grand worth of extra, right? Um, yeah, so the noise at speed here, I'm not going crazy fast, um, is is fine. It's It's not loud at all. The stereo system in this Model X, it rocks. It's really good. Um, and I've listened to a lot of stereos. I find it to be amazing. Uh, that's that's just me. And there is no option for the stereo. Let me go into, this car does have FSD. And we've got the visualization preview on. We'll go ahead and auto steer not enabled. Oh, oh. You know, every time you get in this in these demo cars, they turn everything off. So I'm not going to try the auto auto suspension or auto steer right now. Let me take that out. But the pedals, and I'm going to put it into insane mode. And the steering mode, I like it in comfort mode. Auto shift out of park is beta. Yes, we're going to go for that. All right, let's go ahead and. I mean, this car just jumps. For this thing being 5,165 pounds, it feels light on its feet. It does not feel underpowered in any way, shape, or form. 
you really don't need the plaid. And I know that in general, I've said different things. Like I had the VW ID4 rear wheel drive years ago. And when I drove the all wheel drive, I was like, I'm getting the all wheel drive. Like you needed that. That was a big jump. This car, this big car, this big SUV, the 060 in 3.8 seconds, it's only 0.3 seconds slower than a Model th Model Y performance. And, um, you know, a Model 3, let's just say a Model 3, and I'm sorry, a Model Y long range with the acceleration boost is still not as fast as this car. That's about 4.8 0 to 60 without the acceleration boost. And with the acceleration boost in the Model Y, it brings it down to 4.3. Now there's something weird and there's like an intangible. There's a feeling that you get when you're driving a Model 3 or a Model Y as opposed to an S or, or an X. Now maybe some of you will disagree with me, but the Ys being almost, let's say 800 pounds lighter than this X, it just feels zippier, more nimble, easier. It just feels like it accelerates fast -er. Is that even right to say? But this thing is no slouch. And again, I wouldn't spend the money for the Plaid. The only reason that it makes money, this makes sense to spend money on the Plaid is if you really want the six seat combination. The six seat combination is a $6,500 option. And um, you get that with the Plaid. And the Plaid is is actually $10,000 more from, than the, than the uh, base model X. So it's it's 89, I was gonna say only, it's 89,990 for the Plaid. That's a 5,200 pound or 5,400 pound, because I think it's got a bigger battery. No, it doesn't have a bigger battery. It's got shorter range, what am I saying? It's a 5,165 pound, 5,200 pound vehicle that's doing zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds for 90 grand. Wow, that is, that's a lot of vehicle for the money. For me, I just don't need it. I, I This is plenty fast. When I do a hard acceleration in this vehicle, um, I get I get a little queasy. Uh, you know, in Kathy's car, her Model Y, which is the which is the long range with the acceleration boost, which is about 4.3 zero to 60. I don't really feel the queasiness in that car, but this one I do, and I definitely do feel it in the Model 3 I'm sorry, the Model Y performance. So I think that's like under four seconds for me. That's when I have the Dave, the, the out of spec Dave nauseous factor. Nice little Hyundai Kona electric over there. So um, yeah, these these country roads are just, it's it, there's, I mean, unless you're in a motorcycle like the guys in front of me, I don't know what better visibility you have in a vehicle than in a Model X. I mentioned earlier about the execution of the, the Lucid, which you should drive, it's a great car. Um, you know, the the uh, the thing about the, the Lucid is, is that big glass roof like this does as well, but this just feels more open and airy, and a lot of it's because of this, the execution of being able to put this sun visor off to the side. So just to summarize this, a very grown up, very mature, very refined, but yet, you know, a little bit older technology, but it's still relevant today is what I would say. This Model X is not outdated. With the latest price rounds, you can't argue that you gotta take a look at this. It, and, and if you're considering a Tesla because of the network and you really do a lot of road tripping, um, you've gotta check out this Model X over a Model Y. At the end of the day, I think they're both amazing. That's why we're gonna have both. And it's just a lot. One last thing I do want to say, getting in and out of my Model 3, I love that little Model 3 once I'm in there. Everything just is perfect. It's a great car. But with me being a big guy, getting in and out of this Model X is just, it's like, oh, I don't know. It's just so easy. It, it's at the right height to get in and out. The doors open nice and wide and I, I don't know. I don't have to crunch down. I mean, yesterday when Kathy was getting into the Model 3, she hit her head. I don't know how she did it. She's used to the Model Y, but she hit her head. I don't really hit my head. I think maybe my muscle memory is trained. Um, the Lucid was low as well. Once you were in there, it was great. It, it was great as well. But there's nothing like a, a big SUV. 
and um, and and I'm really liking this this model this model X. So I'm just going to sit back, enjoy the ride up to Mount Kisco here on this beautiful Sunday morning. And oh boy, what a day. You know, this Model X is I'm driving down the road, um, you know, doing like 45, 50 on this beautiful little side, windy little road going through Connecticut. Um, there's no creaks or rattles in this vehicle. It's, it's quite quiet. I'm, it's way more refined than the 2016 that I had. A long time ago that thing was a, a bit of a rattle trap uh, but they they have they have refined this model x i i think quite a bit now that's not to say it's german quality built i know a lot of people are gonna come down on me for saying oh you know but but look for the for the amount for the size of this vehicle for the complexity of the doors uh, for all the seams that you have between the seats and you know the center console and all that there's no creaks at all and I've had I've been driving this vehicle now the past two days, and I'm I'm quite impressed. It's the way it should be, right? Because you know prior to all these price drops, this was a hundred and twenty hundred and forty thousand dollar car, depending on how you you max it up. If you got a plaid with a you know it came with six seater with the twenty two inch wheels, like this vehicle has. Oh, and that's the other thing. This vehicle rides really smoothly with the twenty twos, and I'm only I'm getting the twenties which should add a little sidewall to the vehicle, which I'm excited about. But what I, so I'm very impressed with the way this Model X is driving, uh, as I should be. In addition though, or I should say, what I haven't really talked about is how does the Model Y drive? Now I know I'm not in the Model Y right now, but I, what I, I'm always in it and I can tell you, it's an amazing car. It drives great. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit, it's not as quiet as this, it definitely does not run as quite as smoothly as this. You feel the bumps a little bit more than you do in this, um, but it's very good. I mean, the Model Y is is an amazing vehicle. It's just a little bit smaller and a little bit more nimble, and it feels very quick, even our long range with the acceleration boost. So, um, you know, the the Model Y, go go drive both these cars if, if you haven't really um, had a chance. Our Model Y doesn't have any creaks, rattles, rolls, nor should it. Um, the build quality, yeah, I mean, look, the, the materials that they use in it, it's a very Spartan interior. It's not elaborate. It's not like you've got crazy amounts of, of luxurious materials in the car, but that's, everyone knows that. What you're trading off with the, with any of these Teslas and to a certain extent is, you know, that German sort of quality or lucid quality build interior um and and you're you're giving that up for technology you're giving that up for the network right and and hopefully a lot's going to change over the next year or two with respect to other manufacturers supporting the nacs standard but right now if you want to go out and road trip um and you're road tripping a lot and you don't really want any anxiety whether it's Charger anxiety, range anxiety is not a big deal. You can manage that. But just the fact that you, when you show up to a charger, is it going to work? Is there going to be an open station? Um, are, is, are you going to get the maximum juice? You know, I don't think, I mean, if anybody wants to debate me, let's go for it. But Tesla is the gold standard right now as far as charging. So I didn't mention, of course, you get all the same features in the Model Y and the X as you do in any of the other cars. The app is, is an amazing app. Preconditioning the battery, en route planning, plug and charge, dog mode. All of this is very familiar to you. So when you become a two car family with Tesla, it's, uh, it's just so easy to get from one vehicle to another. Uh, so anyway, those are my thoughts as far as the driving. Um, and, and the Y is great. Even the Model 3 is amazing. They're all good. Um, I, I will say this though. There are so many cars on the market, and a lot of people have been complaining that I've turned into a Tesla fanboy. And um, and I think a lot of people who really know me understand that I love to change cars a lot. Yes, guilty as charged. But I'm also very much open to any competition that's out there. I've owned a lot of non-Tesla cars over, over the years, and I will own more non-Tesla cars once this charging system our situation is, is worked out with the amount that I road trip. So 
you know, I, I still have my eye very much on the Porsche Taycan. I even love the F-150 Lightning. I thought that was an amazing vehicle. All the EGMP platform cars, they're great. They just share one common theme, which is CCS to me. So I can't wait for the manufacturers. I encourage them to continue to build great cars. I will continue to consume them over the years. But right for right now, I'm going Model X. All right, so this brings us to the end of the video. And hopefully what you've been able to do today is learn a little bit about um, does it make sense to spend an additional approximately $30,000 more for this Model X? It used to be like 60 grand more. So, I mean, you really got to take a look at it. Unless budget is a super concern, just go buy the Y or maybe, you know, the rear wheel drive Y. Even the rear wheel drive Model 3, the base one, amazing cars. They really are. But if you're fortunate enough to have be in a position where maybe you can consider the Model X, go check it out. All these little things that add up to that number of $30,000. For me, it's worth it. I'm definitely gonna be getting one ultra red and I can't wait for it to come in. My date is November 9th between December 21st. Let's hope it comes in soon, but whatever. Whenever it comes in, I'm patient. In the meantime, I'm driving my Model 3 rear wheel drive. I will miss that little car. I'm gonna be trading it in and uh, hopefully the numbers don't fade so much because the prices keep falling on these model, on these Teslas. So anyway, thanks again, everyone, for watching another episode of How to Spec Dave, where today we compared the Tesla Model X to the Model Y. You can't go wrong with either one of them. Good luck to you in your buying decisions. Reach out to me if you have any questions, as usual. Take care now. Bye-bye.